Hey guys, it's Janique with Where's the Buzz. We are live in New York for the premiere of Screen 6. Stay tuned as we talk to the cast about the latest installment of this horror classic. Do you know West Craven High? Yes. Okay, well, when I was growing up, the T was broken and it said West Craven High. Oh, wow. And I always thought, oh, West Craven, I'm going to work with West Craven one day. This is very lucky for me. That is amazing. Isn't that weird? It, it, it happens. Like, you did your pivot, you want to be an actor, and then I read that like you wrote Scream, and that's how you fell into it. So, like, what was the... Did you think that pivot would lead to this one day? No, you know, I was just trying to get a job. I wrote. I originally wrote Scream thinking it would never get made, but maybe I'll, I could get a job. Someone would read it and go, oh, well, he can write something and give me a job writing something else. Yeah, and I never thought they'd actually make the movie. It would be a hit and it turned into Scream 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I'm, I'm lucky. I'm a blessed man. First of all, I want to say you played the hell out of your character Thank because you. you really like your Billy Loomis' daughter in this movie. Speaking of that, um, we see Sam's battling with legacy and mental illness. Like, what is the importance of showing that in this movie when it comes to your character and what she's battling with? Um, I, I, I mean, I, I love being able to play a character that has inner demons because I think we all do. I mean, hers are a little extreme because she turns into a murderer. But I do think that, like, mental health is at the core of it. And I love that we get to see her in therapy. And I love that she's, like, struggling and trying to heal. And, um, and I love that the story is so grounded in that. And, like, the human, the humanity of, like, these four survivors of the fifth movie that are coping in different ways. Based on the events that happened in the first movie with just you were in with five, how has your character how's it affected your character in this assault? Oh well yeah, you know, Mindy uh, got real messed up in the head and physically last time. And um, I think that, that this time around that just means that she's really clinging to her people more. As you'll notice, the core four have moved to New York City together. And I think that it's important to her to like spend time with be in proximity to her brother. Their, her chosen family and Sam and Tara um, and you'll notice that her humor is even more witty and biting than it ever was before. What a great question if you were playing your character in real life would you have became friends with the core four? I don't know. They're kind of insane in real mm, that's a tough one I, I honestly I don't know because also I wouldn't want to insert myself into that situation so probably not I guess my character's kind of crazy. I'm like, yeah, these people, like, a serial killer is following them. Let's be friends. <laughs> what? When they brought it to New York City, like, what were your thoughts? Like, oh, my God, I'm doing this in this city. It's pretty wild. I'm at, I mean, I'm at the bodega three times a week. I'm on the train every day. So shooting on the subway was nuts. I just don't want Ghostface to interrupt my bacon, egg, and cheese. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to enjoy my egg bagel toasted. I'm trying to enjoy my orange juice. Don't be freaking me out in the middle of my bodega session, Ghostface. That's what I was thinking Please about. do not be interrupting me while I'm drinking my Gatorade and eating my Doritos. Please do not. I feel like all the poor people in the bodega, they couldn't get their chopped cheese. They couldn't Come get on, nothing. man. I'm trying to relax. I don't need to be seeing you at 3 in the morning when I'm having a night. We're recovering. I'm not trying to see you, Ghostface. I don't got the energy for you right now, bro. I think that was so scary because, like, Ghostface could really be in New York one day. Absolutely. I know you spent many a nights of Halloween in this city, as, as have I. And uh, once you spend one night in New York City on Halloween, you realize that you, you, your stomach is in your throat a little bit. And that's what I liked about this. They took that exact feeling and they made a movie about it. Certain characters, when they connect, they have like a certain sound effects. Like when Dewey and uh, Yo, the last one, like you know their theme song. So like, what was it like creating theme songs for different characters? It's really fun. It's really fun, you know? You don't always get to do that. This is like such an iconic franchise. There's like an expectation from the fans, so it's stressful, but it's a really amazing, fun challenge to do as a composer. And just the, the, the drama of everything that happens and the highs and the lows, it's, it's a challenge, but it's so fun when you, when you nail it. It's, it's really a fun, a fun game. And one thing I will say is with your characters, like the Ghostface killers always play the victim. They think they're the victim of circumstance. Why did you play it that way, that the Ghostface think they're the true victims of all the movies? Oh, well, I always thought it was a byproduct. What I was really hoping to do was 
we have Michael Myers, we have Jason Voorhees, and they're all these sort of unstoppable villains. And I thought it might be nice. I'm about I'm, I'm about mysteries. I'm about I like murder mysteries, and I think creating a killer that's different in every movie might add a freshness to each installment. So you you just never know who it is, and there's you could just sort of you can start from scratch. You, there's sort of like a ground zero with every film because there's a new killer. And I thought that was sort of the important thing to, that would be special about this franchise and set it apart from Michael Myers and Jason Voorhees and Freddy Krueger. And um, so far, it seems to have worked. We'll see. Oh, it's definitely working. Yeah. <laughs> How were you introduced to the movie screen? How was I introduced? Yeah. My best friend Liam um, introduced me, and he was like, "Dude, you have to watch Scream. It's iconic." I was like, "Okay, I'm not really into like horror movies." And boom, because of Scream One, I became like I got immersed into the whole horror genre. Um, I was introduced to the Scream franchise because I had to audition for it. Okay. I'm not a horror. <laughs> I'm not a horror girl. Also, this is not a I am. I am not a horror girl, but. Um, you know, obviously I watched them because I, a part of me felt like I had to and I watched them like with the lights on, like in broad daylight, like literally like this. Um, so yeah, that's, that's how I was introduced. I wish I could say I was in the theater, but I was very, very young when the first one came out. So I honestly watched them just as I became a fan of horror. I just, that was on the list. And so I watched them at home. Well, I just learned it's been 27 years, right? So I, it's funny because I have very vivid memories of watching Scream 1 at my buddy's place. I remember the friends that I was with. One of our buddies knocked on the window and freaked us out. And it was cool because when I got cast... My homie texted me and he's like, bro, you remember that we were together watching Scream 1? I was like, man, like, so this is not lost on me. I, I, I'm geeking out being here tonight. It's pretty crazy. All right, guys, now that's a wrap. Scream 6 will be in theaters March 10th. Stay tuned. You don't want to miss it.